Hello everyone, this is Jerome Wattle. Today's video collage is from my Zoom session called Getting to Know Your Creative Drive with an open studio with Colleen Kiebert on Skip Conover's channel. If you are interested in seeing past episodes or joining the group, I have included links in the description. The intention of this collage was to take images of my spiritual journey and rearrange them to reflect the cathedral as being built over a well and rising to the top as related to the chakra progression chart and also to make a shrine. Since Colleen introduced the chakra chart, my first intimation was that I had painted a picture of the chakras when I was painting pictures in response to Sherry Lovler's poems during our first classes with Colleen. So it does reflect my shrine and reminded me of experiences in practicing Kundalini yoga under the supervision and approval of my mentor, a clinical psychologist. It is important to point out that the practice of this type of yoga is not for everyone and should not be attempted without a qualified teacher. And also remember that my experiences are unique to me and my path, and each person's path is unique to them. However, the Chakra chart is an excellent framework representing developmental milestones. As Carl Jung said, each chakra represents a world of its own. That being said, here is Sherry Lovler's poem that inspired my painting. Soul Guide. My eyes clouded by what they see. Call me to look deeper. My mind, closed by what it knows, asks me to feel my way into the sanctity of life. Wisdom comes in symbols from sources beyond reason. The unreasonable becomes my truth. The journey becomes my God. Sherry Lovler. As you know from last session, I was fascinated with Young's Bullingen Stone and saw myself as identifying with the Mercury figure, Telephorus, carrying a lantern and exploring the psyche. And I noticed that the figure is pointing to the sun. When Young carved the stone, completed on his 75th birthday, he mentioned to Maud Oaks that Mercury was a dual figure, and the river, if you see this little river here, was surrounded by three lightning bolts. There are four quadrants represented. He also told Maud that one becomes two, and two becomes three, and four becomes one, called the Axiom of Maria. So here's an experience I had that may symbolically relate to a transformation. Imagine you're in total blackness and you find yourself in a comforting bubble of silky blackness, tumbling into an abyss no fear, feeling supported as you start tumbling your body. Your body is the color of violet. You notice, you notice a tiny spark in the darkness. And fascinated, you swim towards it like a moth to a flame. You gently touch the spark with your hand and there's an explosion of golden light. 
and you become that. Afterwards, when you come back to earth ground, you see the world in a luminous state. Everything is connected in love. You see that soul spark in others' eyes and you are transformed. I painted a picture of the experience. I also have this painting that always has a prominent spot in my home as it reflects the dance of the self and the witnessing observer. And perhaps Young was pointing to the sun as he himself had said. He always felt he was trying to touch the ground. Nightlife. Darkness falls like a womb encasing me, a blanket or care in the nurturing sky, amid a symphony of hidden creatures. The ground calls to me to touch it, relax on it. Fear slowly leaves like earthworms abandoning the hot sun in search of damp, warm places. The mystery above shares its connection with the history of time. Images come alive as the yin of the night caresses me, challenging my inherent numbness, and something inside softens as if for the first time. Sherry Loveler. Thank you.